All right, Ruthless fans, I know this video is almost a month and a half late, but we're talking Season 3, Episode 7, The Strangers. 6 out of 10. Didn't think it was a bad episode, but it was kind of like middle of the road. Mainly, most of the focus was definitely on um, Lynn and Malcolm being fishes out of water and their experiences on the Rakadushi compound. Mind you that it's pretty much thought that they're FBI as soon as they touch down, but... Uh, just the interactions between like Malcolm and um, Andrew are worth the price of admission. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you are missing out. Yesterday, I created a bunch of funny like memes and, you know, clips and just making fun of the episodes because I binged episodes 7 through 11. Uh, what was it like Saturday night, that Friday night leading into Saturday? And I had a ball. I think that for me, yeah, I definitely enjoyed this show a lot more in a binge session as opposed to once a week because I've said it time and time again, the show was very formulaic of there's always going to be a roof and river scene, a river and Jones scene, a daikon, not trusting Andrew scene, and the list goes on. But given that season three is actually moving the story forward, it feels like it's not a waste of time to watch these episodes. But uh, let's just jump into this review. But like I said, definitely check out the Instagram page. I made almost 20 different, you know, funny things. The cast have been eating them up. And like I said, I had a blast doing it. So let's jump into the episode. So Lynn and Malcolm are there. And uh, Daikon is overall pleasant to the two. He's happy to see Lynn again, who, you know, brought a guest. He wasn't expecting, uh, so are you two dating? Is this your boyfriend or something? Or what's going on with that? And keep in mind that if I remember correctly, Daikon knows that Lynn is married. She just said, you know, oh, I'm done with this life. I'm tired of being just a housewife or, or you know, no, actually she was a teacher, I believe. Wasn't she originally like a cop, then a teacher, and then she had to keep moving because of Brian's job? But regardless, Andrew is pretty much abrasive towards Malcolm, and, you know, Daikon tries to hold him back. But Lynn explains that, yeah, you know, uh, we're here as a couple, so basically, you know, I can only stay if he stays, but if he can't stay, I have to go. So it's agreed that Malcolm can stay along with Lynn, and Malcolm is just over the top, you know, in terms of being overly enthusiastic he just gives a bear hug to daikon who really isn't feeling it then he does the same to andrew who's just like stone faced the entire time um but from there uh zane is called over by daikon to take lynn to the outhouse and um she's kind of like wait you all don't have indoor plumbing no oh um okay so andrew and uh malcolm are having a stare down and it's brought up uh you know that oh i was in the navy uh, you know, Malcolm tells that to Daikon, and uh, Daikon's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, uh, Andrew here, he was in the uh, army, and then Daikon kind of leans over, you know, makes a joke about him, like, oh, yeah, we used to call them, you know, little girls and whatnot, and Daikon didn't think that was funny, so, going over to the outhouse, which is next to the shower, because Lynn is like, wait, so you all shower together, and the outhouse is right here, and uh, then El Supreme Elder Mother steps up, and, you know, greets Lynn, you know, oh, it's nice to see you again. Because remember, she knows Lynn from the couple of times she's been to the uh, compound. And wait, how many times has she been there? I think twice already, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know. I know it was the one time she went and got abducted in season one when she went there by herself. But uh, regardless, she just tells her, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, we're very open around here. And I just noticed how... I know we've seen scenes where people shower before that's not out of the ordinary but it's just funny how slowly they shower like if you look at the people in the shower which I think that men and women shower together I could be wrong about that but I do believe that is the case and remember I binged these episodes cause I feel like there was one episode where I'm like wait that's a woman and a man in the shower together okay but yeah just look at how slowly they move around like you know the soap and whatnot I thought it was funny but um Regardless, it's just funny to see Bougie Lynn using an outhouse. It's like, well, you thought the grass was greener, and now you see that it's not. But uh, we go over to Andrew and Malcolm walking around the compound, and, you know, he's questioning Malcolm, like, what the hell are you doing here? This kind of reminded me of towards the mid-season of season one, 
where Brian and the sheriff are at the compound and it's Andrew and Brian interacting for like the first time walking around and they're kind of, you know, uh, grilling each other. It's kind of the same vein. And Malcolm is like, Max sent me, Andrew knows that's BS. And he points over to the kids to let Malcolm know, look, this isn't a game. Like, this is the real deal. If you blow this operation, people are going to get hurt and die. You know, basically trying to snap Malcolm out of his whole, you know, effing around for my showing him like, you know, little kids are in danger. So you better get out of here. But Malcolm, he doesn't care. He's just acting like this is a game. And, you know, again, Andrew's like, look, man, you need to go. But it's like, you know what? Fine. If you tripping, I'm going to show myself around the compound. So we go over to Joan and Ruth and um, she basically wants her to check on River for uh, her due to the fact that, you know, he's still a bit off kilter due to the way that the highest treats him and whatnot. And uh, Ruth said, you know, man, I don't want to talk to River, but hey, you do that. But here's why here's what I could do for you, Ruth. I can do what I can to delay the pregnancy test for a couple of days, you know, in regards to saying that there isn't enough money for the test, but she'll do what she can. Now, Lacey and Oliver are in the punishment trailer, and um, they they kind of just, you know, chat for a little bit. And this is something that I find funny about Lacey in terms of being a recurring trait. Every time she's in a locked up position, we slowly see her deteriorate from one minute. She's being hopeful to the next, like, I can't take this anymore. But basically, her and Oliver chat about, you know, just hope that things are going to turn out okay. Uh, she mentions, you know, I, I could really, I really wish I had some ice cream right about now. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's all they can do, just hope. I mean, they pretty much know this. the end. Like, there's literally no way out of this, um, but they're, they're just trying to make it through together. All right, so the highest is in a bad mood because he wants food he hasn't eaten in a while, and he's on edge because, you know, you got FBI people on the compound, and he's yelling at Daikon to get Joan, and keep in mind, this is something I noticed over the course of the episodes. Earlier in the season, um, Roof wanted elder mother to stop putting drugs in the highest food but as the episodes progress and the highest becomes more and more unhinged Ruth is like oh we better put that shit back in this food because like now she realizes oh that's why she put that stuff in the food you know to make him calm because when he's not calm she sh should have had the snickers all right so supreme elder mother is uh, carrying a tray of breakfast and Ruth wants to take it to the highest so Ruth uh, does so but you know Marva isn't one to shy away about, oh, the pregnancy test, I can't wait. You're going to be the first to have the test. And, you know, she's with Glee because, remember, she doesn't think that Ruth is pregnant to begin with. So the highest goes off on Ruth, even when she tries to be, you know, motherly, you know, the whole, oh, don't worry, you should calm down. It's like, you need to leave because he just wants the food and for her to go. But Ruth, um, you know, leaves before things get too dicey or slicey if he had that sword in his hand. All right, so Daikon goes to see Joan to get her to go to the highest, but basically, you know, he wants in on the plan. He's like, wait, so tell me what this plan is. But I love the way that Joan kind of flips the script here, basically saying, wait, brother Daikon, you don't know the plan? No, I don't. That's why I'm asking you. Well, if you don't know the plan, that must mean the highest didn't tell you for a reason. So by that logic by that logic neither can i and then daikon is pissed off because well what can he do that's a solid logic there now um malcolm is you know again just taking that tour doo -doo 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 -doo, and daikon um walks up on him because of the fact that well you know andrew he kind of strayed away from him and <laughs> it's funny because Andrew, uh, when he is asked about the whole punishment trailer thing, because even though Andrew isn't technically giving him the tour, he is kind of keeping an eye on Malcolm so he doesn't do anything stupid. But too late for that, he showed up at the compound. Uh, but, you know, he's asking what those trailers are about. Hey, that's none of your business. But then Daikon says, it's the punishment trailer. It's like, <laughs> punishment trailers? Come on now. Y'all don't punish anybody around here. And then the look on Daikon's face says it all. And he's like, you know what? Hey, I think it's time to, um, you know feed the guests so uh let's go to the pavilion and we'll bring you some food or the kitchen and we'll give you some food he's like oh wow thank you so much so um we go over to joan who goes over to the highest who basically breaks it down uh saying that hey in a couple of days we could get the money 
uh, just what I need right now is to make a couple of calls to the banks and have the Wi-Fi available and then we can transfer to three million dollars so over at the kitchen uh, Malcolm meets the supreme elder mother and Daikon you know again introduces them to like um, Supreme Elder Mother, would you mind making our guests some food? Oh, sure, you know, uh, oh, Sister Lynn, uh, you brought a, a good-looking young man with you. Okay, we'll treat you very well. And, you know, they're very thankful and whatnot. So as soon as uh, Lynn and Malcolm go to the pavilion area, Daikon's like, hit them hard. So, you know, she's going to drug or that food, something fierce. So we go over to Roof and River and checks on him because, you know, he's really just messed up. But essentially... It's the same old, same old. We need to get this money so we can bounce. And it's like, well, hey, I'm not getting, um, you know, getting a uh, leaving without my kid. Girl, F them kids. <laughs> but it's like, hey, you say that again, I'll slap the taste out of your mouth. But, hey, he's trying to get that money and bounce. River knows. River doesn't want any dead weight, essentially. So, uh, back with uh, Roof talking with Supreme Elder Mother. Um, they chat about the whole calming the highest down with his food. So again, she brings up the pregnancy test. That's again a running theme throughout these episodes. Oh, we can't wait. I can't wait to get a pregnancy test so you can set the example and take it first and you know, yada, yada, yada. All right. So, um, we go over to the punishment trailer, highest and Brian are there. And yet again, um, Brian won't talk, so he gets another finger removed. And interestingly enough, a semi-stripped Lynn, who is knocked out from the food, is tossed in because, so do you know her? <gasps> and then Brian's like, what? So, oh yeah, it's funny because I didn't really talk about this, but it's funny when you go back to the moment where um, Lynn and Malcolm are eating, and you have, I think, Andrew's off to the side, and you have Daikon and Marva, who are... They're essentially like vultures, you know, like they're just waiting for the drugs to kick in so they pass out. So Malcolm is like, ooh, ooh. so he stands up and then falls out on the table and he's like, wait, wait what, what's happening? He's like, no worry, he'll be okay. Did you do something to our food? Oh, and then she passes out. But I ain't gonna lie, that food looked pretty good because, uh, yeah, it looked pretty good. But essentially, this was a pretty okay episode. It wasn't bad. Like I said, it was just like, yeah, we're setting up what's happening next with new prisoners at the compound uh you know malcolm and lynn are passed out and you got brian who's down another finger so thanks so much for tuning in thanks so much for uh just being patient well no nah, it's been five weeks y'all weren't patient uh thanks for tuning in that is hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video follow me on social media links are in the description below hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and select all that way you don't miss out whenever i post content on the channel